Okay guys, hello, it's Logan Richards again here with a Zed video due to popular demand. I decided to make him uh, number six. Um, I think the next video will be uh, Elise. So if you're looking towards Elise or learning anything about her, there's definitely a lot to learn. So look forward to that. Hopefully to be done in around a day or so. Okay, so in this game, I am uh, Zed vs. Ari. Zed vs. Ari is... It's definitely a skill matchup. Alright, there's there's really not much to it. Um, not much to it that you can't... You can't describe in a way to figure out what you did wrong. So, basically, in every situation, if you die or you get a kill, there's something that one of you did right and wrong. And there's always a definite answer on what you should have done. So it's a really easy matchup to to learn your plays um, better as a, as a player of that champion. So um, I played this matchup a lot back when Zed and Ari were meta, I think, season four. So because of that, I'm not, I mean, like, I'm not much of a mid lane main per se, but I, I do know a lot of, about this matchup specifically. Um, Zed is a champion that he is a attack damage assassin. Not much other builds that you can go. He can't really do anything else other than that. His spells are pretty, pretty straightforward. Passive, when you auto attack something that's less than 50% health, you'll do some extra magic damage. Q, linear skill shot, um, does less damage. The sec uh, after it hits one target, it, it'll do less damage. And then even less for your Living Shadow, which is your W. Your Living Shadow is uh, a shadow that you can, again, linear placement, I guess, that you just put it uh, anywhere within the range, and then your shadow will mimic any of your basic abilities, being your Q and E. And then you can uh, instant blink towards it by casting it again. And then your E is a circular around your champion uh, damage spell that will apply a slow if a shadow hits a champion, or a minion for that matter. And then ultimate is death mark, I'm sure everyone knows it, where you target a champion by casting it within the range, and then uh, once, you, once you do, you have 2.5 seconds, or 3, 2, I, don't know, I actually do not know which specific it is to um, do as much damage as you can to them because then uh, it'll it'll have some extra damage after three seconds I'm going with three to um, pop like any damage that you do will add up and the more damage that you do the more damage that it will do and then you have six seconds to activate the same clone that you uh, started from the original so the moment that you ult there's going to be a clone or a shadow rather, that will be uh, your R clone, and then you have your W clone from your W itself. So pretty easy, um, pretty easy to use them, I guess, pretty hard to keep track of them. Alright, so in this matchup, you want to start Q. Um, she came to lane late, but usually in this matchup, and in, in most range matchup for Zed, is you want to, you want to play pa passive until 3 and 4, usually about three you can start getting more aggressive than four you can feel really strong but you want to just see us with um your Q for most of the early game now in this game she came a little late so knowing knowing that Zed doesn't really get that strong until three and four I pushed as hard as possible because that's how you just get through the early game now knowing that you get level two off the seventh minion um that you ever kill so once you kill the whole first wave and then the first minion of the second wave you'll get level 2. So by hard pushing that, I kind of negated the whole level 1, which, you know, that's not going to happen every game, but for general, um, for future purpose and for someone else's purpose, you want to just farm with Q usually, unless you're against uh, a melee matchup, and that's completely different where you want to actually just go for a lot of trades because Zed, um once you get someone in a melee matchup down past half, you just abuse your passive as much as possible, and it, it adds up. So right here, for for a gank, you want to do uh, WE 
to apply this low, and then that'll make your gank a little bit better because that's the only CC you have at Zed. But I missed it, but that is still the right decision and right play to do. Okay, so um, after every gank and every kill like this, you always want to hard push. Like, 100% uh, of the time. Vi actually should have shoved with me. That's what uh, a lot of junglers will do. Whoever gets the kill shouldn't get all the last hits. So I got uh, the kill, so I would have given most of the last hits to Vi. Or if she got it, she should give it to me. And that's how uh, getting ganks works. That's, that's, some, that's stuff that uh, most people know but don't respect. So you definitely just got to find the right player. Now, um... Since I got this gank, right, I'm level 5, she's level 3, she's going to be level 4 from that, um, that minion, yeah, like, that minion actually right there. Excuse me. Okay, so, again, you, in this matchup, you want to WE, um, W onto her, like, as close to her as possible, E to apply the slow, and then once, um, in that amount of slow time, you want to throw a Q. <gasps> no, there's two things that'll happen with that. One of which she'll run towards you, and which you yourself, being Zed and the clone, will hit two Qs. Now, if that is that is pretty pretty lethal, actually, because if you do that, then uh, your E counts as one, your original Q um, counts as two, and then your second Q counts as three. So that'll actually proc Thunderlords, and that's huge damage. You really want to go for that. Now. It, that is the harder one, but the second thing that'll happen is you just hit one of them, and that's still good enough. Because that's almost a trade that most people can't reply to. Alright, so right here, I'm level 6, she's level 4. Um, I didn't really want to go too hard because she has exhaust, and if I got under turret, I'm, I'm not for sure that I even get the kill in general. And I had no vision of their jungler. And right here, you know, as you can see, I, I died of their jungler. Right here, Nocturne plays exceptionally well by... Um, he used his spell shield right as I death marked, so he actually didn't have to deal with that, which is good on him. You know, that's that's really good play. That's the right decision and everything for him to do. So I I I wasn't ready for that, honestly. Like good for him. That's actually really good play. Highly respected. So I obviously when you're when you just respawn you wanna throw out your W to get to lane as fast as possible. But um there is there is something pretty um pretty bad about that. Like as you can see, it's going to affect me here. Is like I want to CS with uh, I want to get that minion, but I don't have W. Or in this one too is because I don't have W. So uh, you you'll miss out some for that, but I think just getting the experience in general is good. Yeah, that that right there. I went to like stop her back, and then she got away after taking the damage. That's that's unlucky, but it happens. Right there, I miss the CS with E. That's just like, that's just poor play. But uh, you, you guys probably won't do that. So right here, Jin is in my lane. I have no idea why. Just gonna push out the wave since again, Ari backed. You always want to push when they back. Never let them. Never let anyone get a free back. You always want to make them miss something, anything at all. If it's killing a pink ward or pushing the wave, usually the two most um, most prevalent things that will happen when someone backs. Alright, so I decided to go Maw first in this game because um, I'm I'm actually scared of dying to Auri just because after that I'm I'm one one and like that's not really snowballing so um, that's like I, I just play it safe. So right there you saw me actually get the um, we in both queues and damage like. I, I might have exaggerated how much it does, but it still does a lot of damage. Like, what I did to uh, her was actually huge. You know, it was a good, like, 300 damage chunk. She was forced to use a health potion. Sure, that health potion got her back, you know, extremely high health, but I did that for free. So, uh, health potion for nothing is, you know, that's good. So, right here, just, um, Ari players will spam Q at the wave because when they push you in and Auri roam is better than Zed, so that's the point. She's trying to push and then roam. And because um, I don't let her do that, that's what's keeping her here, and that's what's keeping me able to, you know, play lane out, you know. If someone is out roaming you, then they're killing your team, and that's what you don't want. All right, so right here, I don't go for the Q trade because I don't know if Nocturne's coming up to me. 
and you know that's something to be scared about. But nothing, you know, nothing crazy is going on this game. This game doesn't, um, it gets pretty crazy, like right there. All right, so that's, as a dead player, your first thing that you want to do is if an Ari ever wastes taunt, or anyone ever wastes the 1cc ability that they have, always, always ult right after. Right here, she just, she went for um, her W to kill me, which it was coming up to actually kill me because the first one is already hit. Second one was uh, coming around to, uh, you know, kill me. But I, I W'd right onto her, but I did it while walking away. And that's kind of the mind game that you want to do is, like, you, everyone knows that since she didn't have E, she was going to be spamming Q. Spamming Q at where I was. So I threw my W where she couldn't, her, her Q, when she threw it at where I was, wouldn't hit me. But it would also get me in range to kill her. So you got to be really good with your uh, W placement with Zed because, it, you know, right there it can make you or break you. So definitely um, work on your W placement if you start dying a lot or you see that you have a lot of deaths in your games. It's prob probably because you either waste your W too much or you just generally put it in bad spots. So that's definitely something, um, uh, definitely a way to improve your Zed play is to definitely um, pay attention to your W placement because that's, Again, just the way a lot of Zeds die or yeah, get kills, but if you don't do it right, then you won't get kills and you will die. And that's obviously not what you want to do. Alright, so Ari's um, going to pick up blue, but, well, alright, so I thought she was going to pick up blue because she started walking towards that, but she might have just been trying to roam, but that was just the wrong time because the wave wasn't good enough because I'd just push into her turret, and then I'd get free turret damage, and that's what you don't want to do. So, as a player, again, never let someone get free damage on your turret. Never roam without pushing. Alright, so right here, this is a good little thing to do. Um, you can place a ward over that wall, and then pink the bush that you're in, and if they come up to ward it, since you know it's not warded, you then, you know, get a free trade on them. Just make sure to not let them trade back. So right here, I'm going to in intentionally take this charm, because I'm going to go for the kill. Now, right there, that's the, your Z, Z basic one, is you want to have spacebar as your um, as your button to go back to auto-target your champion, or, I guess, um, lock your camera, because as Z, the moment you will, no matter how much movement they do, if you, as um, you as a player, have your, have your uh, spacebar to lock your camera, then you'll always see yourself, and you won't get lost. So it's definitely a big tip. Definitely start using that, or just find a comfortable key for you. I I like spacebar because my thumb isn't doing anything else other than uh, leveling up spells with my alt key. But you know, if I'm ulting someone, then I definitely don't need to uh, be holding alt. Okay, so um, that's a, that's a pretty good Z tip. Definitely um, definitely want to do that. All right, so don't forget that your lane combos will be W E to get this low, and then Q. So W E Q is the way that that sequence goes, and that's that's how it works because you're gonna throw out your W, you're gonna slow him down, and then you're gonna hit the Q for damage, and then hopefully you are positioning in a way to get two Qs to hit, and which Thunderlords, and then you know things like that. Now um, you can do just straight W Q, and then if they ever come back to um, to trade with you, then you have E if they if they don't respect your clone. Don't expect that one too much. Just stick with W E. Um, right there you saw me clear you place your shadow next to the um next to the back. Alright, so you place your shadow to the right or left of the mage minions, and then you throw a Q at them while meleeing the melee minions. And that'll clear the wave as fast as possible and then you use E and whatnot. And that'll that's your like way to push is that so that's how you get your pushes get your room started or just generally keep up with CS. All right, so you know this is just something not really Zed based, but if you ever have a Nocturne in your games, you want to do what this Tarek has done, and you want a deep ward behind where he will come. So as you can see, bot lane they have that tri bush warded, and that's how we're able to keep track of Nocturne. And that is huge. So definitely always spam ping a Nocturne or someone with a global when they start leaving because that's how you just start saving your team. So right here I go in for an all-in. I use my ult to, um, I use, alright, so I use my W to get close, or to do an average combo, WQ. 
and then I ult um, Ari to hopefully get the kill. So right after, right out of it, I do an auto attack E ignite, and then she happens to go down to my uh, ult clone, which again you got to be really quick. You got to be paying attention to where your sh um, shadows are. You really can't mess up with that, or you'll miss out kills. Now right there, I still missed out on the kill, but I played it right. Like, there's nothing I could have done right, uh, different there other than maybe get some damage beforehand. So right here, I'm going to throw my shadow uh, where I am right now. And doing that, I'm going to have an out. So if Rengar's in this bush, I can just instantly W right back. Now, I could have scouted with my W and placed it in that bush, but that would have given Rengar vision of me, and then he could just jump onto me. And then if I were to jump back to my W clone, he would just have a bush to jump and kill me. So th you're... Alright, so that's something a lot of Zed players don't do and don't know about, is you want to throw your W to where you want to be, not not for vision all the time. Like, it is a good scouting thing, but you... Uh, scouting ability, but you don't want to use it as only that, because you want to use it as your way out, if the thing that you're scouting can't kill you. So, like, right there, I was, you know, I was pretty full health. Rengar couldn't have killed me, and then I could have just um, left left right there, and he would have lost vision of me. And that's that's the right way to do things. Never never always scout with W, because it will be the death of you. So it's definitely a big thing to um, think about. Definitely uh, go back and watch that if that didn't make sense. But try and make sense of that, because that will definitely help you out a lot. Alright, so right here, this is just a bot lane gank, you know, it'll happen, it might not, who who knows, just make sure to spam ping when your, your laner goes missing. Now right here, I should have gone and attacked the turret, but I didn't because I didn't know where Nocturne and Auri was, so I made that decision, it could have been wrong, could have been right. Zed is the champion that works pretty well with blue buff, you know, he's cooldown, cooldowns on an assassin are always pretty good. And then energy, you know, if the more you get it out, the more you can do. And Zed's, he's pretty uh, ener energy inefficient if you aren't hitting um, two things on the same thing, on the same person. And I think I forgot to mention that um, if you hit w the same person with, um, with the same spell. So if I were to hit two champion or one champion with two shurikens, then I would restore some energy. So that's definitely a good way to stay full on your energy is to hit people with two things. So, like, if you're going to ult someone, you're already on top of them, right? So you have your E, or your, yeah, your E about to drop on them. So throw your shadow down to get some energy back. Because that'll be two E's hitting, and then there you go. You got some energy back. That might be the energy that gets you your last Q, you know? So that's basically um, the right way to play around uh, being low on energy. So right here, um, I don't want, you know, you never want your mid turret to die for free. I use my W to get out to base, which might have been wrong here because I'm not unable to clear the, um, the wave fully. Uh, now, I still get the, um, the W back in time to use it, but, it, I mean, it, you know, it doesn't matter because I wasn't able to clear it. Didn't have a team, but, again, don't, don't suicide for a turret just because it's a turret, you know? That, that's just like the wrong decision because if I if I were to die at mid, then I wouldn't be able to make this team fight happen. So, uh, Vayne suicides for Rengar. We have a 4v3 going on right now. Um, Nocturne's going to ult in, so it's a 4v4. As an assassin, you never want to just jump into their team. You know, if I were to go into that that tri bush, I would have died. I would die instantly. So right here, I'm going to wait on my cooldown. I, I see that I have my W up. Instantly go into that bush so they forget about me, kind of. Like, in their head, they, they can't see me, out of sight, out of mind. And then you want to fully get as much AoE off as you can. So that's the right way to play team fights is you never want to be the one jumping straight into their face. Because, you, uh, you, again, you're an assassin. You're not tanky. You want to play smart and not, not just go for sweet outplays or whatever. No, just play smart. Smart's the right way to play Zed. If you're if you're not gonna play smart, then you might as well just like play someone that's not Zed. Honestly, I'm not gonna say a champion because that would be like if someone likes that champion, then it would be a huge argument. That's the wrong way to, <laughs> to go around. Uh, go with doing that. So right here, I prioritize the pink ward over uh, getting mid turret just because you know with that Ezreal ult and then Ari coming in, I wouldn't have gotten much damage. And I don't have, I didn't have W up. So, um, 
that's uh, never go for a turret when it's too risky you know like I understand that like trick 2g and other other streamers like that say always go for um turrets when you can but definitely again just be smart uh, like this hour he's not being smart right now going into clear pink ward and yeah that's just that doesn't work out for her she just dies i'm really trying to like get this kill because that'll get me started with this yumus because if i'm able to get yumus then i'm huge again with um zeta itemization you want to you always want to go yumus first yumus is your best item first and then um you all right so then you have a lot of decisions to make with zed itemization there's a lot to think about so uh, some things to think about are what you want first now you move is your first item that you want just because it's your best most efficient really easy build path item but you can swap that out for maw or hex drinker now you can go hex drinker and then you moves if you if you're if you really don't want the maw uh, fully or you or you do want mall but generally either of them is fine don't be don't be too stressed on it now some other um, decisions that you want to make but before that so if you want to just a standard Z build going Yuma's cleaver is pretty good that gives you 30% cooldown it'll get you the 25% cooldown reduction is um, how to get I believe it's two Q's and three E's off with one W. Now that's like that's pretty big for Zed because you can you can siege a lot better with that. But generally, just going um, this this build where you go Yumu's Cleaver will get you 30 pretty early. And then right after those, if you haven't already gotten them, make sure to have boots. You want to get boots right after that, just because like it's just bad to not have boots around the time that you'll finish this. Alright, so right there you have three items. You have your boots, you have your Yumus, and then your cleaver. Now, if you want to cap out and go to 40, you build Death, Death Dance. Death Dance is a good item because, for one, it's 80, it's lifesteal, and it'll keep you from being bursted. So you can definitely take 1v1s a little bit better, or if they're uh, an engage comp or something like that, then Death Dance will be your, your go-to item. And it's just a really good item. Don't underestimate it. And that'll get you 40%. So there you have, you know, four items of your build and 40%. And it's all it's all really easy to build. It's really good. And then after that, you you can go um, Last Whisper and then Bork. If whichever one you need, you know, at the time. So if they have armor, then you want Last Whisper. If they have health, then you want Bork. And then um, Mercurial Scimitar, if they have... Um, some CC that you want to get rid of, or Sterix if you feel that you're still getting bursted. Alright, so right here, um, spam ping my team off just because I don't want them to die, you know, right next to Baron, because if you die next to Baron, then you give up Baron, obviously. So right here, Vayne's going to go in super hard. Doesn't accomplish it, actually almost dies. Surprised she didn't die, but she makes it out with heal. That was, that was funny, I guess. <laughs> Definitely something um, to expect in your games with Vayne. You'll definitely have... If you're ever going to play this game in ranked, be prepared for the Vayne that does that. But, uh, I mean, like, the right thing to do is to not type to him afterwards. Definitely, um, if you've learned anything throughout all these videos, that's probably one of the biggest tips I can give you. Alright, so right here, um, you know, I'm a 5 and one Zed pretty farmed like 175 cs at 23 minutes is actually fairly high because like the the pro is to play a pro player would have like 210 220 but that's unimportant because right now this is how all right so if we're pushing top lane people are going to come to defend it so i'm going to sit in this bush and make sure that i'm killing the person that comes up so right there that's exactly what happens if they don't have people already defending so that means that someone's going to come up to defend and that's how you play Zed. That's how you position a Zed. You want to be around your team. You don't always have to be on the screen next to your team. You want to be around them looking for the people rotating. Because people rotating, first of all, they usually don't have the right vision. And second of all, it the, the element of surprise is all you need to beat anyone. Even if you're you're not fed, is just having the jump on someone will, will win things for you at least 50% of the time, in my opinion. Alright, so right here we're going to go um, for Baron. 
this one doesn't turn out that good. Um, we we just didn't decide to nuke it down fast enough, so we wasted a lot of time. But uh, I mean, we we make it out pretty good. So right here, I I just run because I think Nocturne's gonna be on me, but he actually ults Vi, and then Vayne does pretty good. Trundle's being Trundle, not dying. So this is how you want to do things with Zed, is you want to stand in vision clips like that corner to hopefully pick up a kill. And you want to do that fast combo that I did. It's where you Q, all right, so you auto QE or QE auto. Now, usually if you have the vision and they don't, then autoing and then QEing e is the fat, is like, it just feels fastest to me. So that's what you want to do. And here's me doing this build. You know, I like it. It's pretty good. Again, um, you want to go you know, maul Yumus. I decided not to go Black Cleaver right after the Yumus just because if, I mean, look at, if you can see the tab as I hit it, Nocturne is huge. He is it, two deaths, I think like nine kills. He will definitely burst me. So I feel the need for the death stance at this point just because uh, Nocturne's huge. If he ults me, I want to weigh out. So he's A2 at this point. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, this is me opting into the not want to get bursted route. And since they did take out Distortion with 6.9, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, like, it's good and bad because that's 450 gold you have going to whatever item you need. So that's something to less worry about, that's less to think about. So, f again, just focus on Zed. Be happy with the Home Guards at 20. <laughs> so right here, this is just your average, you know, screen-wide combo. Well, not so your screen wide gap close to get onto a carry. So you want to, you know, WW ult, and then when you ult back to um, your original ult, your clone from where you were will still be standing there. So definitely try and get some more damage on if people are there. Like you saw me go for a Q on Ari, but uh, I mean, I missed it, but that's the right thing to do. So right there, Rengar ulted. I dropped a pink because I believe in myself. <laughs> Uh, no one, I checked my inventories on my team, none of them have pink wards. Didn't want Rengar to get some cheeky play on Bane, and then we lose something. And plus, we've been trying for Baron so hard this game that it's, it's never bad to have a pink. So right there, gonna throw Q at the wave just to make sure that it's always pushing, unless they force it to do otherwise, but, yeah, can't stop them from doing that. Can only make the minions fight and win if they're on the only things fighting. So right here, going to just, um... Make sure to try and burst down Baron myself. Like right there, when I saw the Baron was at a thousand, I threw out my combo. I threw out my QE auto attack to burst it down because it, if I smites, then that's going to be you know 700 damage that um, my passive on my auto attack will proc on if it feels right or just Q and E. You know I'm I'm securing Baron. Um, not every time, because if someone just smites correctly, then, you know, then they get the Baron. But I'm making sure my team gets Baron by using my burst combo when it gets low. And that's one of the ways that you can mess up your jungler, but, again, it, it is their their job, air quotes, to um, get the neutrals. So definitely throw out your combo to hopefully ensure that you get it. Because right there it mattered that I did, because my jungler missed the smite. Alright, so right here, I'm just trying to run them down, honestly. Like, we just got Baron, and we're not that far ahead. Like, uh, the the turret race were only one ahead. Minions were slightly ahead, and kills were one ahead. But we do have Baron buff, which is huge, and then Baron itself gives 300 gold. That's, you know, that's a lot of gold. So definitely want to... um. Push your advantage with Baron. A good way to remember uh, how long Baron will be if you're on the enemy team or you're on yours is when you hit tab. So the moment you hit tab, Baron has a 7 minute death timer. Baron buff itself lasts 3 minutes. So when um, that clock strikes 4, <laughs> that's a weird weird uh, way to say that, Disney Channel like. But yeah, when, when the Baron timer hits 4 minutes, that's when Baron buff will be gone. For anyone that had it the whole duration. So it's definitely a small little tip to definitely remember. Uh, for dealing with Baron buff and whatnot. So right here. I'm trying to make a play by like. Jumping in on Ari. But then 
Ezreal's honestly, he's just going to flash on me and kill me before I flash. And you're going to see my cursor go right real quick. Oh, see, that was me trying to flash. I was a bit slow on it. But, yeah, I mean, you, you can't outflash everything, you know? So right here, just going to hope that this raid boss of a trundle can uh, make something happen. And Tarek, because new Tarek's pretty strong in my opinion. Uh, I, I definitely like him. He's really fun. But that's not this video. This is about Zed. Okay, so um, not real much to see right now. Generally just a, trying to tell my team that the enemies will not have exhaust. Because that's definitely something that you want to communicate when you can. Is uh, ex I don't know why I paused it. Exhaust is definitely something that you want to um, communicate with your team, especially as Ed, because if if your team knows that the enemy team doesn't have exhaust, then they're going to play more aggressive to hopefully find you an opening, and that's what you want to do as a team is literally just find those openings. So right here, I mean, Vayne's just pushing, uh, pushing, pushing against Nocturne, and I mean, that's what happens. You you just get ulted, he's fed, he'll kill you, and uh, I guess that's a... I guess that's a tip to tell you. Um, don't push against a Nocturne as a 4 and 5 vein at the time when he'll just kill you when he's fed. So there you go. Big big tip. Probably didn't know that one. Maybe. Maybe not. So right here, just going to uh, kind of wait out Vayne's death timer. Not much to do when that happens other than clear waves. Kind of, kind of, yeah, just clear waves. Hopefully not get caught out, caught out, take any damage that you would not want to take because dragon's going to be coming up um, usually before a dragon you want to do the obvious and get rift scuttler don't forget about rift scuttler when you stun it as Tarek just did it's 60 MR and armor go down to 10 so that's exactly what you want to do every time that you kill a scuttler if you can uh, if you have CC to use it at the start so you can do your combo and you'll, you'll just get more damage off Alright, so right here, I'm just going to play this one smart because I'm not going to go in straight through the front of a team fight. I'm going to go around. Right here, it doesn't actually work very well for me, you know. I I mean, I die for the cause, but, you know, me dying for a 1 for 3 is definitely worth. And Rengar, it was a 1 for 3 just because of me, and then Rengar suicided for a 4 for 1. And that's, I mean... Yeah, that's great. <laughs> definitely take that in your games. One for fours are definitely good. And plus, you can watch your team uh, enjoy your enjoy you as a person. Right here, just watching my team siege. You know, only Nocturne up. We have three people pushing. He cannot do anything against that. So we're going to pick up this inhib, and then hopefully everyone just gets this dragon, and then we move on. I'm going to be up here in about five seconds, so it won't be much. I decided to pick up um, a Vamp Scepter here because I'm not planning to go into Bloodthirster just happen to have the build path I was looking for, but because I feel like the game can be over real soon, I'm going to pick up as much stats as I can. Usually people do this through elixirs, but I feel like um, life is pretty good on Zed because it is. So definitely, um, definitely try and pick up some small things like that if you have the gold. And if you want to be cool, you can... You can uh, spam right click and S to do that little thing. But uh, Vayne wanted the farm. I I didn't want to give it to her, but I mean, definitely give uh, 80 carry players the farm if they start spam ping like that because, through my experience, a lot of 80 carries are the biggest tilters. So, especially Vayne players, so just be smart. And don't forget to CSing, it didn't really come up much in this game, but when you're CSing two minions, right, so if you have one minion at 50% health and one at 10% health, you want to throw it at the 50% one first so that you get its most damage, and then the one at 10% will ultimately die even with a reduced damage. I explained that a little bit in the beginning, but there's an actual example of it. So right now we're just clearing out their, um, their Baron Vision just because we see that their top laner with Ignite is bottom. Now, I mean, Rengar can, you know, just run up river, do whatever he does to come and stop Baron. But the thing is, like, when you're going for Baron, it's usually good to just commit to it. You want to commit to Barons like this because we feel, like we have no vision of Rengar. He it has to be hitting our inhib turret 
really soon. But the thing is, is again, Baron recalls are four seconds. Those are four short seconds to get back. So right here, literally cancel my recall on accident. Would have been at base, but doesn't matter. Going to go straight for him after that. Have home guards, have everything. Even if we don't kill him, we stopped him. And trading that for uh, Baron is definitely good just because... Even if we lose two turrets, you know, we're basically still even in gold, except we have a three-minute Baron buff. So definitely, um, definitely always take a trade if you are only giving up two turrets at most to always take that over Baron, because Baron is just better. That's definitely something a lot of players don't know. It's pretty good to learn decision-making, and that's one of the bigger ones. So right here, um, I mean, we got two kills, and, uh... I mean, it's it's end game. Death timers are huge. By just kind of suicides here, but at this point it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna. Um, I mean, I'm gonna go in for something. I I actually don't hold space there just because I knew that I was gonna leave, so I just uh, keep it where I can see where I'll be and where I am. Uh, nothing too crazy. Just ending the game. And yeah, so I hope this is that video is informative. It was definitely um. Definitely a really good one for me. Uh, I didn't have to be a huge carry in this game. It was relatively even. But, you know, there's a, there's a pretty good Z thing. So don't forget to... Uh, W-E-Q is your lane combo, and always do it. It's definitely the biggest thing for Z players. Hope I made you or your friends better. Good luck.